Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Who's Your Bookkeeper? I'm Christopher Small, the owner of Big Bird Accounting, and I've got Ryan Kimmler on the in the uh, on the pod today, or in the studio, or wherever we are, wherever you're listening. And uh, we're just gonna dive in because now we're four minutes late, and uh, it's my fault. So, good morning. I, well, I don't know where you're at. Good morning or afternoon, wherever you are. Not quite. How's afternoon. going? Good, going good. I'm in uh, the greater St. Louis area, so not quite afternoon. 11:30, still good morning. Okay, nice. Yep, almost. You're you're creeping up on noon. That's good. Yeah. Uh, all right. What? Uh, man, I'm just gonna dive right in. I've been doing. You're the um, third person I've interviewed on this new podcast I've got, and I've done it differently every time. So I'm kind of just uh, <laughs> uh, cool. experimenting with what works, and and uh, you know, also just like to talk. Uh, yeah. More so than like ask a bunch of questions and stuff like that. So uh, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned, or as you mentioned, Ryan Kimmler, I'm in the greater St. Louis area. Um, Chris, I really, I help business owners do one thing. And that is I help them have a growing and more profitable business. Um, I use, I actually have a background in accounting myself and, and that's, I use my background in accounting to help them do that. Um, and I'm really excited to do this show because I can't tell you how important bookkeeping is. Um, you know, that's not what we do at our firm, right? I mean, we're, we're focused on growth and, and coaching. And I typically build out financial dashboards for business owners. Um, but, um, he, you know, our job is heavy, heavy relying on the bookkeeping and, and the good data you know, that comes out of that system, we have to have it in order to really do our job. And we're, you know, helping, like I said, helping business owners grow and be more profitable and really helping that, that, that ensures two things. Number one means that they have enough cash flow to grow their business so that they're still financially healthy. And number two, it means that the owner makes enough money that they want to make, right? I mean, I think most people get into business to make money and a lot of them, you know, if, if you're not really keeping an eye on your finances, if you don't have good bookkeeping and records, and you don't have someone guiding you through some of the tough decisions, you're probably not going to get to where you want to be. So that's yeah. really what we do. We help business owners get to where they want to be. Nice. What is the name of your business? So it's the Net Profit CFO. Um, so, okay. I mean, basically we're fulfilling the role of a part-time CFO. Um, you know, I don't always like to throw that out there because, you know, that could, to, to business owners, that can mean a lot of different things. And to some business owners, you know, they don't even really have a good handle on what a CFO does. So I just like to talk about what we do instead of what names are for sure. Yeah. Do you have a certain type of business that you work with normally, like a, any industry specific type of people, uh, like size of business? Like what's that look like? Yeah, absolutely. So typically um, law firms and professional service, that's typically the space that we're in. So, um, and typically they're anywhere from one to seven, $8 million in revenue. Some, some a little okay. smaller, some a little bigger, um, but that's <clears throat> typically the space that they're in. Right. I mean, you, you think about that space, especially that one to 6 million, right. You really have some financial challenges along the way, um, but you are not making enough money where you can hire a full-time CFO. And so, right. you know, that's really been a sweet spot for us, a sweet spot for our clients They're you know, they're big enough. They can get a good return on what they're investing with us. Can you give me an example of like what you guys do? You know, sure. like obviously you don't have to name the firm or anything, but like <laughs> somebody comes to you, they're making 2 million bucks a year gross, right? We're talking about gross revenue. Yep. <clears throat> what do yep. they say? Like I'm not making enough money or I want to grow or what are they? Yeah. Yeah. So I've curious. got, yeah, I got a six step process that I always follow. So first one is um, we're going to sit down and we're going to set targets for where you're going, Right. What do you want this year to look like? And then we stretch that out to three and five years, right? It's like if you have a growth plan or, or you want to you know, get to a certain stage, right? So that's where we're going to start. We're going to sit down and, and we're going to build out that plan and we're going to set targets where we want to go. After that, um, I'm going to be looking at your actual numbers. Where are you today? All right. And that heavily relies on the bookkeeping piece, right? Right. And, and good numbers and good bookkeeping, right? I really like working with clients that have good bookkeepers because that means I don't have to go in and make a bunch of adjustments, right? Which takes me more yep. time and things Let like that. Let me ask you this. We're going to yep. get back into your process. I'm going to cut you off a little bit. For okay. Time. <laughs> okay. Cool. One thing I'm curious about is do most of the people that come to you, do they have clean books? Do they have a bookkeeper? Right. No, I would, I would say no. I would say the majority, well, the majority have a bookkeeper. 
the majority do not have good clean books. Okay. Right. And, yep. and that's why for me, like, you know, I, I'm, I love connecting with bookkeepers and, and I love evaluating their work and, you know, really finding partners for me that do good work is really, really important because I have referrals, you know, because I want to work with good bookkeepers so that we've got good data. Yeah. Most, yep. of, most of them don't. So yep. that, so that brings me to the next question, which is what do, what do, um, bad books look like or what do clean books look look like for you you know like what are some of the um things that are important factors for you yep so i think first first things um you know we've we've got to have everything on the right statement so when i say the right statement i'm really talking about you know the there's two key financial statements that most business owners look like which is the income statement and the balance sheet okay so we've got to have everything on the right statement and so a lot of times, like, especially I think about like debt payments, right? Like if you have a loan, a lot of bookkeepers, they don't break out interest in principle. Yeah. Right? I was just talking about this with uh, one of my law firm owner clients yesterday so, because he was trying to do it in a crazy way. And we we're like, no, you need to, <laughs> it was interesting. I'm going to tell you the story real quick and we're yep. going to get back. He's like, he gives us the he gives us a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet with a loan balance on it. Let's call it a hundred k, okay? Just to yep. like make the math easy. He says yep. I'm making a payment every month of nineteen hundred and fifty five dollars and thirty eight cents. All right, and he says, you know the the um, the principal. This is much as principal, and this much as interest. Okay, but then when he shows the balance of the loan for the next month, it's the it's it's the hundred k minus the nineteen fifty five thirty eight every month, yeah. And we're like, one of two things is happening. Either it's all going to principal, which, which means you got zero probably in interest, not, or you're right. or you're or what ha what had happened? What I don't know. Ex I never did get a super clear explanation, but they he sort of like uh, rolled it all up into one number at the beginning. Does that mean, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And sort of amortized mm -hmm. it over time or something. I don't know, but, mm -hmm. but okay. Okay. So that's one. Yep. Prin yes. Principal so, yeah, and interest so, broken up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to your point, so interest you can expense, right? Which means it reduces right. your taxes, but the principal, when you pay debt principal, that goes to your balance sheet. So part of the Correct. transactions go in the income statement, part of the transactions go on the balance sheet. So a, yeah. So really, that's a really important distinction and getting everything on the right statement is what good bookkeepers do. Right. They yep. get the interest in the right place. They get the balance on the debt payment in the right place. Another big one is owners distributions and draws for, for personal expenses. OK, if you're expensing personal items, that's obviously going to reduce your tax liability. And if you were to get audited, right, they're going to move that to owner's draws, which is personal income. And that's on the balance sheet. So it's two different statements and getting things in the right place, I think, is one of the most important things. Number one, um, you know, I could also go into like client advance costs. Right. I've seen yep. those on the income statement. That's wrong. They should be on the uh, balance sheet, short-term asset. Anyway, that I would say do that's you, number one. Yeah. Do you, this is just a, a, I'm just curious about this. Yeah. When it comes to like owner draw and defining what is a personal or a business expense, that can be tricky for the bookkeeper, right? Because they're kind of just getting the statements unless it says something like, I don't know, 18 holes at, Augusta or something yeah. where you're like, okay, bro, this is golf. Like, yeah, I don't think we can write. Tell yep. me more. Right. Or something yep. that can be a little tricky. Right. I, um, yep. But yeah. So yeah. I, yeah. So I think, you know, and, and this, this would be my second, <laughs> this would be my second thing on what do good bookkeepers do, right. Is they have a consistent cadence on when they're working with the business owner. Right. So, you know, if, if a bookkeeper is working, you know, with the business owner, they should really send questions twice a month. So once at the end of the month, the last week, so if I, if I look at the month of May here real quick, um, you know, the 27th is Memorial Day. People are probably not working, but the 28th through the 31st, they should send their first list of questions. And that list of questions should cover all the month of May up to that point. Okay. Then we yep. get in the first month of, or first week of June and they could send a follow up with any questions that they have that happened on things that happened between the 28th and 31st. So we're, we're cutting down on the number of days that we have to ask questions on in the next month, which means the books are going to be done sooner and finances yeah. are going to come out faster, which is another point is I want bookkeepers to be timely and have things out fast. Yeah. 
We so, do ours every week, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So because so, the reason why, the, so we've experimented with this because I, I have my law firm, I own a law firm too. Yep. And we have, we do books for that. Yep. Um, I would get asked a question about, you know, what happened? It's May 7th right now. Like what happened on April 24th? And I would say, I no don't way. remember. I don't know <laughs> what happened. No way. And, yeah. and it's also typically um, a lot easier to get a response because on a weekly basis, there are three questions instead of 20 questions, yep. you know? Yep. So yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. Yep. And I would say at most, you know, again, if you're sending questions on the last week of the month, the 28th through the 31st, at most, you're asking about three weeks, right? Yep. The, the one thing I would say about, you know, sending weekly questions, some business owners would get overwhelmed with that. And then honestly, over time, they're not going to answer, right? They don't yep. respond, but that's on the business owner. And, and to me, like, I think it is important enough to respond, sit down and take 10 minutes, but at a minimum twice a month. Okay. Yep. Um, so that, so that's another thing that I would say good bookkeepers do. So what we've covered so far, just to recap real quick, they get things on the right statements. They're timely and they have a consistent cadence with the business owner that they're working with. Um, and that is going to help you clear up some of your owner's draws questions that you have. Right. Yeah. And then, um, Third thing that I would say is, you know, they probably have, you know, a good knowledge of, you know, the industry that they're working in. Right. I mean, because, again, like we talked about client advance costs, um, you know, if you don't know how to handle those and you don't understand what those are and what those are for, you're probably not going to get them on the right statement. Right. And so, you know, trust account they, reconciliation. Yep. That's another another point. Yep. Yep. So, you know, in today's world where we've got a lot of folks working remotely, right? I mean, if you're a business owner, you should really seek out and find a firm that really knows your industry and has yeah. experience in it, in my opinion. Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. So let's get back on the on the six, uh, six things. Were yep. we on number two? Were we we were. Two? Yeah. So I okay. look at the actuals. That's how we got into the bookkeeping, right? So I look yep. at the actuals. I review those reports, review those numbers, kind of analyze the data. And I look at what's going on in the business. That's really step two, right? Step so three step is- to recap real quick, because I jumped all all around. Step one yep. is sort of like, where do you want to go? Step two is like, where are you at right now? Yep. And where have you been? Yep. 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 Step three is we're going to forecast forward what path are you headed down, right? Um, and then what I always do is I compare, okay, if you keep going the way that you're going, you're going to end the year with these numbers, X, Y, Z. We compare that to your targets. Are you going to meet your targets or are you not? And that shows up in step four, which is our scoreboard. And so everything on the scoreboard is color coordinated. Green, yellow, red, right? Green, we're on track. We're going to hit our targets based on the forecast. Um, yellow is obviously some things that maybe are not on track, but maybe don't have a big financial impact. A good example would be, let's say we budgeted for, or targeted for the year $200,000 in overhead expenses. And let's say you're forecasted to hit 208,000. Okay. In a two or $3 million business, $8,000 in expenses is probably not very material. It's probably not a big item that we need to go attack and spend time on. Right. So that's probably a yellow item. Okay. And then items that are in red are items that are really, really off track. So in the example I just gave, maybe instead of $200,000 in overhead expenses, maybe you're 350, maybe you're on pace for 350. Obviously that would be a big deal, big gap. That's going to impact you. Um, financially in your profits and in your cash flow. And so that's step four is we look at the scoreboard, green, yellow, red. Yep. Step five, we take the, score, the, for the scoreboard. Are yep. you, is it mostly financial metrics or are you, tar so like my scoreboard is, you know, I, I do have some things like that, but like my, just from like my law firm, for my accounting mm -hmm. firm, this this the um for when it comes to growth when it comes to um hitting goals and things like that you know like i'm tracking leads i'm tracking yeah. sales i'm a, i'm just tracking like a growth like a revenue number on the whole which i'm sure is something that you got that you'll is on your scoreboard are you adding things in that are non-financial but that are like indicators of growth or being on the yes. right track yeah. yeah. So typically, typically our scoreboards are mostly made of financial data and then we have other pieces that feed into them you know, so a good, for instance, as you just mentioned is, you know, leads, conversion rate of those leads, right? Retention yep. rate of your current clients, especially if they're, you know, coming back and purchasing from you. Um, so we're looking at those kind of things. We have a products and services tab that we typically cover all of the services that you're offering. We look at profitability on those services. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things that feed it kind of feed into the scoreboard that are kind of precursors. The scoreboard is really the big summary piece that kind of 
tells it all to us. Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. So that's step four. What's step five? Step five. Um, we take the red numbers. Usually there's one or two a month um, at most that, you know, things are not on track, right? And we create objectives on correcting those numbers. Okay. So a good example, again, with the overhead, 300 and let's say you're on pace for $350,000 a year. I don't know what that is off the top of my head, about $30,000 a month in spend. So an objective would be, hey, we want you to reduce your overhead expenses from $30,000 a month to $25,000 a month. Okay, so that's setting an objective. It's a big overall, you know, big picture um, where the number is now, where we want you to get to. That's an objective. Yep. Step six is we're creating next steps. So we're working with the business owner to actually build out the rest of the action plan um, and build out a list of steps on how we're going to get that thing done, right? Whatever it is, could be overhead expenses, could be a lot of other metrics too, right? But it's literally individually, step by step by step, one, two, three, four, who's the owner in the company, who's responsible, and what's the due date when we expect them to have that done. So when a business owner leaves a meeting with us from our firm, they're going to get two one-page PDFs summary, very simple, very straightforward. One is their scoreboard, so they know their important financial numbers. They know if they're on where they're on track, where they're not on track. And they're also going to get their action plan, which they can share with their team. Hey, these are the things that we need to get done in the next 30, 45, 60 days that are really, really important for our financial success. Got it. That's a six cool. step process. And then we started all over, right? And and the next month I look at the actuals and we started all over. Yep. Do you guys <laughs> excuse me? Do you guys do goal setting on a quarterly basis? Do you do it on a annual basis? How do you yeah, typically, you know when to reset? Yeah, typically we're looking at an annual basis. Um, and then um, and then we stretch that out to three and five years. Sometimes there are things that change in a firm and they and we completely reset. I'll give you a good example. Uh, I've got a family law firm, family and criminal law firm that I work with um, in Michigan. Um, another law firm in town closed down. And this law firm had the opportunity to pick up kind of like a partner level attorney that is bringing like a $700,000 book of business with them. Okay. Okay. So obviously, <laughs> you know, things are impacted, right? Like that is such a big change in the business. We needed to completely reset, completely redo targets, obviously bringing $700,000 or more revenue that we didn't expect. Um, but also, you know, filling out the expense side of that as well, right? I mean, do we need yep. to hire another paralegal to support this attorney? Yes, we do, right? Adding in the payroll piece, right? And so um, if something like that major happens, we absolutely reset. Otherwise, for the most part, you know, we're setting targets for a year out. And those are the numbers that we're striving for. That's what we want to hit. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Now, that's cool. I like that. That's fun. What do you, uh, how do you find most of your clients? Um, mostly through speaking engagements. Um, I, so I am a CLE speaker. Um, I like talking about the numbers and finances yeah. and educating attorneys that way. And so usually speaking events, um, or, you know, networking with strategic partners. Um, I work with quite a few business coaches, um, cause a lot of times, you know, they're working on the operations and sales side and I work yeah. on the finance side and we're a really great partnership. Um, sometimes tax professionals as well, right? A lot of, especially if you run a tax practice, like they don't have time January to April to go through this target setting process and really coach businesses on how to do better financially. They want that for their clients, right? And they, yeah. and they probably have the background and the numbers to do it. They just don't have the time. So we can make a really great team as well because our firm, we don't do taxes. So, um, yep. you know, I need help there too. And so I need great referral sources, you know, on the bookkeeping and tax side because our firm doesn't do that. And so we're really relying on those, you know, additional financial fiduciaries to help our clients. Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. Who is your bookkeeper? So my bookkeeper, I have a lot of systems set up internally. Uh, my bookkeeper is actually my executive assistant um, yep. that, I'm, that I'm working with. I've been working with her for a couple of years now. Um, she is out of the Philippines for the most part. I mean, my bookkeeping is really straightforward and I've got the systems in place that it's just a lot of button clicks. Honestly, it's kind of, you know, are you a, are you a two person operation? So just you and your assistant for the most part? Um, no. So I've got an assistant and then um, I've got a full-time staff accountant in house. And then oh, um, right now I'm actually talking with a um, CFO that I'm looking at bringing on part-time as well. Um, they've got a little over 15 ex years of experience um, working inside of a law firm as a at controller level. And so I'm looking at um, bringing them on as on a part-time basis as well. So yeah, it's a growing team here working on it. Yep. Yep. That's cool. I mean, for the most part, I don't know. 
I don't know if I'm going to bookkeeping is it's in and of itself is not that complicated. It's just a couple things that can really throw you off, you know, yeah. for the most yeah. part, it's just like, what's coming in, what's going out, you know, what, what, you know, where should it go in the, in the little, you know, in the line yep. items. Yep. It is those other couple things though, that can really, uh, mess you up. And, yep. uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. That's why I didn't have a bookkeeper for a long time. And then I was like, my tax guy kept going, bro, you have to get a bookkeeper. And I was like, all right, fine. <laughs> and then, you know, I, uh, I'm kind of a systems nerd and, and, you know, like to do things well. So I was like, well, let's, let's do it. Let's just build this out, you know? Yeah. And then once it exists for my firm, I'm like, well, why don't we just do it for other people too? So that's yeah. cool. Heck yeah. Um, yeah. All right. All right. That's good. Um, doing it. Cause I, I guess, I guess I, I'm, my bookkeeper is internal as well in many sure. ways, right. For my law yep. firm. Yep. So, and, well, and for the accounting firm. Yep. So, okay, cool. What, uh, what else? How can people, um, I don't know, uh, law firm owners will definitely be listening to this sure. because all I, this is a, this is a, um, well, people will know this if they're on my, all of my channels. Yeah. So, you know, I do some consulting and things like that for law firm owners. I, ha I still do it. It's just not, um, Yep. I just do it for fun. Really. I'm yep. not right, super salesy about it, but when okay. I started this accounting firm, I just switched all of my, all of my old channels to now this accounting business. So nice. it's just filled with law firm owners. So do you, this is a good podcast for you to be on. Sure. Get, get in front of people. So oh, with that being said, how, uh, you know, people want to get in touch with you. Um, what's, what are, where can they find you? Do you know? Yep. Give us a rundown. Um, yep. Best place. Um, one of the best places is just search Ryan Kimmler. I mean, my LinkedIn page is going to come up. LinkedIn does a great job of, you know, being one of the top when you search Google. Um, second place would be, netprofitcfo.com. Keep it okay. real simple. Um, they can also find the Net Profit Podcast, um, all about helping business owners grow their profits. Um, and I'm sure that your audience is going to get more familiar with that because I'm going to have you on as a guest as well. So, yep. you know, we're going to yep. kind of share here and do a podcast swap. And yeah, so Net Profit Podcast, netprofitcfo.com. I mean, any one of those places, or you can just search Ryan Kimmler um, and my LinkedIn profile is going to come up and you can connect with me there as well. Cool. And what's the, what's your process? Like do you, <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you do like a strategy session? Do you do like a, what's like a, what's like a initial step for people, you know? When they're yep. Here? Yep. So my first call, I call a profit acceleration session. So out of that session, typically it's a 20, 30 minute meeting. Um, we're going to dive into one of the problems or one of the issues that you're having. Okay. We're going to talk about your business and where you're at today and where you want to go. Um, you know, if you're interested in working with me from there um, and you're a right fit, I actually have a um, financial assessment tool. Um, that for the owners that are serious and work with me, I'll cover the cost of. Um, it is there's at least five thousand dollars of value in, in those in that tool. Um, I always find a five thousand dollar profit or cash opportunity or both or better. Yeah. Um, basically, it is a two year um, trend analysis, break even analysis, profitability analysis, cash flow analysis, all rolled into one. Um, and all pretty charts. Um, you know, not not hardcore numbers like most accountants give. Um, everything is, is chart based. Um, so, you know, it's going to provide a lot of value for the firm owners that take advantage of that. Um, and then from there, I mean, you know, most of the time people have seen enough of, you know, what I can do and how my firm helps and they're ready to get started. So that's typically my process. Nice. Cool. 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 Well, that's it, man. We're Very in and cool. out. This is a 30 minute deal. I, so right now it is at least. Yeah. Um, so I, I really, uh, you know, appreciate you coming on. Uh, you know, I love talking about this stuff. hundred uh, percent. Um, so it's been uh super fun. Can't wait to come on your show. And you know, if, if, um, anybody needs help with your business, which is probably just about everybody, especially, you know, if you are, you know, my, my firm's in that seven figure plus range, you really, it, it really can be helpful to have somebody, do doing analysis on on cash flow on expenses help you um particularly for i think attorneys are a little risk averse it's and uh it's hard to make some of these growth based decisions it's helpful to have somebody that can say like you know you're you're making enough money to be able to forecast this person and add this person and and do this thing and so uh that that can be extremely helpful i think um for yeah, pretty much all business owners, you know. 
I do. Yeah, I, I do a ton of compensation reviews and plans, yeah. especially as folks look to hire. Right? How can we compensate people appropriately, especially you know as you get looking senior attorney and partner level, and also still be profitable at the firm? I do that a lot for business owners. I completely agree. You know, with what you're saying there for sure. Yep, because it does get tricky too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. It does. It's tricky. Yep. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, that is it for today. Um, Thank you for having me. I appreciate Bye. it. Yeah, appreciate it. See ya. See ya.